As I'm recording this video, I just saw a shooting star happen. Holy crap. It literally happened on a normal night. A random shooting star. It is totally possible. Just cap that. Now that everyone has welcomed a few villagers to their island, paid off their initial mileage debt, and become a master of DIY, the hotness for Animal Crossing New Horizons revolves around shooting stars, star fragments, and Celeste. And so, of course, today, that is what we're talking all about. Now, there are lots of bits and pieces of this information and of these tips floating around, but I am determined to give you one comprehensive video that encapsulates all of it. So we're talking about the shooting stars, about the meteor showers, about Celeste, about star fragments, about the different types of star fragments, about what you can build with the star fragments, about what you can build with the star fragments and how it works. We're going through all of it, as well as the alternative methods to see shooting stars, how they can happen without meteor showers and how you can work around ha not having Celeste appear on your island. Whew, it's gonna be fun. What's going on everybody? It's Agnes Switch Force. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Let me know in the comments down below if you've seen a shooting star in the game. I'm about to give you guys some tips and some alternative methods that even I didn't know were possible. So give me your experience or if you're hoping to see a shooting star, hoping for Celeste, let me know that as well. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and are having fun with Animal Crossing if you're not. Or if you haven't had a chance to get the game yet, which is probably the only way you're not having fun, Amazon actually just put the game on sale for 49 bucks. It says it's backordered until April 9th, and it seems to be going backwards and backwards and backwards. So if you don't have the game and want to get in on it and are willing to wait, they do have a current $10, $11 discount, which is pretty sweet for a game that just released a week or so ago. Anyways, let's talk star fragments and st shooting stars. So shooting stars appear most often during meteor showers. Now, I thought that was the only way to see shooting stars, was that you had to wait for Isabel or Tom Nook to announce, hey, there's a meteor shower happening tonight. Now, I sat there day after day after day after day and never got the meteor shower announcement. Not once. Celeste never appeared on my island. So I thought I was doomed. It was doom and gloom and I was never going to see a shooting star and never make my way through this wonderful world of star fragments and magic wands. But I have learned that there are reports that you can get a meteor shower without the announcement from Nook or Isabel. So make sure you're checking at night just in case there is a meteor shower. And it's gonna be pretty obvious. There are so many shooting stars. I've seen people say that they counted over a hundred shooting stars even 200 shooting stars during their meteor shower night. But along with the new knowledge that a meteor shower can occur without the announcement, it's also possible to see shooting stars on an ordinary night. I've seen multiple occurrences of people saying they did get a shooting star on a clear night just by looking up at the sky. Now, I've not been able to make it happen myself, but as I said, I've read multiple places from multiple people. As I'm recording this video, I just saw a shooting star happen Holy crap. It literally happened on a normal night. A random shooting star. It is totally possible. Just cap that. Yes, indeed. Okay. Back on. Another one. Oh my god. Holy cow. Okay. Multiple shooting stars are appearing. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so it's totally possible. Anyhow, I'm sorry. Well, there's so many. If you really want to wait for it, and you can't get a meteor shower, you just might spot one. But... Celeste is really where it's at because she's going to teach you not only how to wish on shooting stars, which I'll tell you right now, you just press up on the right stick to look at the sky and tap the A button when the star flies across the screen. Boom. Don't need Celeste anymore. But actually you do because Celeste will deliver the recipes that help you build magic wands and so much more. So there are multiple categories of star fragments and it's unclear on what determines which star fragments appear if it's going to be regular star fragments large star fragments or zodiac star fragments Now these star fragments wash ashore the day after the meteor shower so in the morning go check the beach if you've wished upon shooting stars if celeste has been there and you're going to find star fragments and they will continue to wash ashore throughout the day the more stars you wished upon the more star fragments it doesn't seem to be an exact science or correlate directly but it does sure seem like the more shooting stars you wish on, the more star fragments you're gonna get. But what if you can't even find Celeste? Well, my little workaround was to travel to someone's island that also had a meteor shower. Real quick, I wanna give a big thank you to Alfie who let me visit his awesome St. Noah's Island. He was having a meteor shower and he said I could come check it out since Celeste refuses to show up at Peach Reef. This was a wonderful opportunity to witness the miraculous and 
even though you can't do everything on friends or other players' island, if you are able to find someone that does have a meteor shower, or a friend of yours does, go visit their island. You'll be able to talk to Celeste, she will give you a recipe, and you will be able to wish upon the shooting stars and gather the star fragments in the morning. So it's a wonderful way if your game won't pop a meteor shower because they're not tied to specific dates, they're not tied to specific times, they seem to be totally random. At this point, we're still digging through to figure out if there's any rhyme or reason to when meteor showers actually occur, but right now it seems like dumb luck. So if you find someone that has one, go visit. You can still partake in this incredible experience. Now Celeste will first give you a magic wand recipe, but after that, it seems like it is totally random. And I don't even know if it's guaranteed that she always 100% of the time gives you a magic wand first, but for me, that's what happened and that's what I've seen, a magic wand. After that, you can get other types of wands. You can get really cool moon stuff that I don't want to spoil the specifics of, but there's a lot of really cool outer space moon themed gear. And you can get recipes for zodiac themed furniture. Now, let's go back to the star fragments. As I mentioned, there are regular, there are large, and there are zodiac fragments. The regular star fragments are going to be used in concert with other items for most of the other types of wands and the outer space gear. But for the magic wand, the first one that you get, the star wand, it's called, you'll need a large star fragment. And this randomly appears with a lot less frequency than the star fragments the morning after the meteor shower. In fact, my first meteor shower, I did not get a large star fragment, so I wasn't able to craft the star wand. Luckily, I was able to craft the bamboo wand, which functions the same way, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But the zodiac fragments are also rare, and so currently we are in the time of Ares, and so Ares star fragments can pop upon your beach, and those will be used to make specific furniture recipes. Right now, there's an Ares rocking chair, which looks pretty neat. And then as the months progress, and as we move through the zodiac calendar, it looks like you're gonna get different fragments based on the time of year. Okay, so that's what we know right now about star fragments, what they're used for. Again, you get a random recipe from Celeste to craft something super cool. It seems like it is star wand, magic wand first, but that might not always be an exact science. All right, so you get your star fragments the next morning, you craft your wand, what can it do? Well, the wands are pretty wonderful. They are your magic way to swap outfits. And the game is pretty clear that this isn't just changing clothes on the fly, it's actually a magic spell, a transformation. So you still have your current outfit on underneath said transformation. It's like you're wearing two outfits at once and you can register a bunch of outfits onto this star wand wheel. And as I've seen, the bamboo wand and other wands function exactly the same way. You register these via your wardrobe. You can name the outfits. It's a pretty freaking sweet process. So let's take a look. So as I mentioned, you're gonna need a wand. And today we're gonna be using the bamboo wand because I don't have a large star fragment, which is required for the OG star wand. Anyways, the bamboo wand works just as well. You're gonna need to craft a wardrobe if you don't have one already, because this is where you'll register the outfits for the quick swap of the wand. You approach the wardrobe and it will let you edit your wand outfits. It's a pretty fun interface. I love that you get to set eight different outfits. You get to name them. You get to set a little picture. It's pretty sweet. But I should let you know that as you build these outfits, each clothing item can only be used once. And what I mean is you can't use, say, the Maton Pushi hat or the hockey mask face mask for two different outfits. So you're either gonna need duplicates if you want similar styled outfits, or you're just gonna need a lot of different apparel in order to craft your eight outfits. Because as you can see, the pickings get quite slim as you progress around the wheel. But it's super cool that they are transformative. So you keep your OG outfit on underneath. If you've got a main look for your villager, you will be able to quickly go back and swap into that outfit. So you can set these wand outfits for special occasions. If you want a space safe outfit for when the shooting stars appear, boom, you're ready to go. And if you want a really fancy outfit to impress your friends when they come over, boom, you're ready to go. And you can always revert back to what you have on underneath. This was a really fun one I made. It is my Lord of the Flies outfit. I found this hockey mask, which is very horror movie esque. So I combined it with a grass skirt, a wooden log backpack, and some sandals, and I'm ready for whatever kind of island sanity is about to ensue. So the whole system works really well. And once you got a bunch of different outfits assembled, you can pull out your wand, press the button, pick 
the suit and you're ready to go. You just hit the A button and you can choose from your wheel. And you see their little picture, you see their name, and it's an instant transformation with the ability to hit X to quickly revert back to your OG clothing. And that, my friends, is how these wonderful wands work. Now, wands are the major thing you'll acquire via this whole shooting star process, but there are some really neat other pieces of furniture and gear that are Zodiac themed and outer space themed. One more quick note about the wands. You cannot access uh, and edit wand outfits if you have a wand outfit on. So you gotta make sure you are your nakey jakey self and return uh, to your original outfit in order to customize more outfits. There's something about duplicating and going through the layers of multiple outfits and multiple wand outfits that they don't want to have happen. But that is going to do it for the video. Star fragments, shooting stars, Celeste, alternate ways to make it happen. And yes, shooting stars that appeared as I was recording this video proving with footage that you can in fact grab some even if there's not a dedicated meteor shower and even without Celeste. Now I do want to add at the end of this video that my experience with those shooting stars that you saw, I could not wish upon them. And right now it is a complete mystery to me as to why, because I have wished on shooting stars before, I have seen Celeste before. The only thing I can think is that because I visited Celeste on a different island and Celeste has not come to my island yet, maybe the game isn't registering that I can wish on shooting stars until Celeste comes to my island and tells me I can do just that. But that's a tiny mystery that we'll save for another day. Right now you got all the goodies on Shooting Stars and Celeste. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you enjoyed the video and got something out of it, definitely hit that like button. Let me know in the comments down below your Shooting Star experience or if you're now going to try and track down Celeste, head to a different island to find her or just stare into the sky in hopes of seeing a shooting star. Also, if you've come up with anything crazy that you've built with your star fragments, I'd love to know about it. So talk at me in the comments. I'll be down there replying. Thank you so much for all your support. It has been wonderful building out this Animal Crossing community with all of you. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you want to join our Discord, Switch Strong, link in the description below. You can talk AC, all sorts of other Switch stuff, a great, safe, fun, positive place to play while the times are crazy. In the meantime, I'll be back with another AC video soon. Until then, subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date. Turn on the notification bell if you want to be first to know. And until next time, stay safe, everybody. I love you a lot. Switch Force, out.